Hey guys, uh, it's been a while since we put a video online, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a video today on a, uh, another tool, another um, kind of feature within iOS that you have at your disposal for trying to identify issues. So more often than not, when something, when something comes up, uh, somebody's going to come and, and ask if there's anything wrong with the network. You know, is uh, something wrong with the network? I, I've heard that question probably 50 times so far in my career. And uh, and you know that it's kind of guilty until proven innocent when you're working in the network shop. So you have to kind of be able to quickly identify what's causing an issue that's going on because uh, when it comes down to nobody knowing who's responsible for it, then um, all parties are responsible is, is how it goes in the IT community. So... Um, the tool that I'm going to go over is the embedded iOS packet capture and uh, this, what this does is it gives you the ability to capture packets on the wire um, based off based off an access control list and kind of on a specific interface or a VLAN or a tunnel, whatever you want to do. And this is going to let you export those, or the capture, I should say, those packets and import it into Wireshark where you can do some in-depth analysis. Now, I'm by no means a Wireshark expert. Um, I like to think I'm not an expert in anything, and, and we all learn every day a little bit more. So I'm going uh, to give you a resource in the description of this video uh, for a, a guy who does pretty good videos with Wireshark. Um, I just watched some of his videos last night, and he definitely puts some time and effort into them, and he's pretty good at what he does. So I learned a little bit from him, and uh, I'm hoping he keeps releasing new videos. They're, they're pretty good real-world examples, too, on how to use Wireshark. So... Um, it's good stuff. So when it comes to capturing packets for you to try and identify where the issue lies, um, you can obviously, you know, on the host or on uh, on a server, you can set up uh, packet capturing uh, using Wireshark just natively on the on the interface itself, and that'll give you data going between the gateway and the device, and that might be enough. Um, but uh, you don't always have access to these devices even remotely it can be tricky plus you have to install software um, so there's a couple other methods you can use you can do uh, what's called a span port where you can take uh, say a uh, uplink interface or something where you're trying to monitor traffic trying to capture specific packets and you can span that port to another port and on this other port you might have a host with Wireshark running you might have a an IDS or some sort of appliance that's capturing these packets um, and uh, so that's pretty straightforward we may go over it in a video sometime because there's a little bit more in depth to it if you want to span um, basically duplicated traffic to another port that's not on the same device you have to do what's called remote span and you have to set up a essentially a VLAN and run it through your whole network to where uh, where the endpoint is where you're trying to send those packets so a little more complex and we might cover that in the later video like I said um, so spanning basically duplicating the uh, traffic sending out another port that's an option you also have the um, the uh, the ability to use this is a little different you can use ACLs on uh, iOS and what you can do is you can set up an ACL for specific traffic you're trying to see if it's coming through the network and uh, you can watch your ACL hit counters and see if uh, if it's catching matches for that traffic That'll let you know if you're you're definitely not or you are seeing the traffic. Um, may identify if a firewall is blocking it if you know you're sending the traffic. Um, it's just another kind of resource you have as well as, speaking of firewalls, um, the, the ASDM packet capture, uh, whoops, bring that back, packet capture capability. Um, I don't have... I don't have a uh, ASA in front of me, um, and I need to get the uh, the image put into to the new GNS3 version one because I believe that you can run those. But uh, ASDM packet capture. Um, trying to find a setup window. There we go. So ah, it's kind of bad resolution, but you get the idea. So you can go into Wizards and uh, the packet capture wizard. And on the Cisco firewall from the ASDM, what you can do is specify source, uh, you know, host network, wildcard bits, destination, same thing. Or you can use an ACL. I think you can only use an ACL on the uh, PIX firewalls, if I remember right. The uh, the modules, they're not a full-blown ASA. And uh, what this will let you do is uh, 
you know, specify ingress, egress interfaces and capture all traffic coming through the, the firewall. So that's good. Um, very good tool. And it'll, uh, you know, you can put it on a, on a buffer and it'll keep showing you new traffic coming through. Um, and uh, the only downfall is you don't always have firewalls everywhere on your network, right? So um, that leads us to the actual tool that we are covering in the video today, uh, which is the embedded iOS capture. So this is going to let us, uh, as I've said before, capture on a specific interface or VLAN or tunnel um, based off an ACL. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, we don't exactly have an issue that we're going to capture today in specific, but we'll capture some traffic, some pings, and maybe some TFTP or something. And um, and uh, we'll bring it up in Wireshark so you can kind of see what it looks like. I'm just I want to make sure everyone's familiar with the commands and how it all works. So so what we've got going on here um, in GNS3 is I've got uh, the cloud that you saw there. Let me bring this back for you to be able to see. Um, these are very minimal configs on these devices, so we're going to see errors pop up like this duplex mismatch. It's fine. We should be able to run with it for what we're doing. Um, this cloud right here is actually connected to one of my NICs on this uh, lab workstation I'm working on now. So that's going to let us TFTP the capture file over and then open it on the actual uh, operating system I'm on. Um, you can look up online how to do this. It's pretty straightforward. Um, there's a... Uh, basically you go in here and you pick which interface now there's um, resources that say the best thing to do is to create a loopback interface and and you can read how to do that online but it's it's it gives you the ability to integrate services from your actual real world network into gns3 networks which is good so let's go ahead and get this set up what we're going to do is we're going to capture on this link right here it's the f00 port on router 4 192 16801 um we're going to capture some traffic there and then send it over to our TFTP server. So, uh, first thing you got to do is set up an IP access list. Uh, we're going to do extended, we call it cap. Um, we're going to permit IP any any. Now, it doesn't matter what you do here. I mean, it does. What, what you want to do is kind of uh, uh, set up an ACL that uh, will capture what you're trying to see, obviously. Uh, and so, you can do it specific to IPs, ports. Um, anything an ACL is capable of, obviously you can you can set it up for this capture. You just want to you want to make sure you're not too granular with it that you maybe miss content that could be involved in the issue. So that's why I'm going with the permit IP any any. It's going to capture all traffic, which is fine. It just depends. You need to know obviously you know how uh, busy the segment that you're capturing on is, um, and you can set max sizes on these captures so you don't you know have issues with that. But We'll cover that in a minute. So with that being set up, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a um, monitor, yeah, 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 capture, buffer. Um, this is where you have to give it a name. <clears throat> I'm going to call it buff for buffer, and we're going to put circular. That's going to create a circular buffer, so it will uh, kind of loop back on itself if it runs out of room recording. Um, there's also linear, and there's different settings you can set at this point. Oh, sorry, prior to this point where you can set up max size and some other things. Um, that filter command, you're going to see that again in a moment as well. This, um, The general idea here with this uh, embedded iOS capture is you set up a buffer first. Well, I, I don't know if it really matters what order, but basically you have two components, a buffer and a capture point. So capture buffer, capture point. The buffer is going to hold the data, hold the packets, and that's what you're going to export later. The capture point kind of specifies, you know, um, what interface you're capturing on and it does the start and stop and uh, and all that you'll see that in a moment here so let's we'll start with the uh, start with capture buffer it's good to go next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna filter this buffer that we just made based off the access list that we made a moment ago so we're gonna do monitor capture buffer buff filter uh, access list cap so now we've associated that uh, that permit IP any any is associated to this uh, this filter. Um, to be honest, I think if you don't filter it by an ACL, it may actually uh, IP any any uh, right from the get go. But um, I don't know that offhand. I'd have to look it up. Uh, something you can check out. You may not have to do an access list if you're going to just capture all traffic. Uh, next thing we're going to do is create the capture point. So command syntax is very similar. Capture point. Um, 
there's a couple things you can do from this point. You can associate it to a buffer. We're going to do that in a minute. You can disassociate it. You've got IPv4 and 6 options. We're going to use IPv4. And you can start and stop the capture point. That's when you're actually capturing the traffic. So we're going to do IP um, Ceph and we'll call it Trace. Oh, sorry. Missed that. Uh, here's one of the important parts as well. You have to specify which interface you're capturing on. So we said a minute ago that we're going to do fast zero zero there on router four f zero slash zero and you can specify in out or both i'm going to do both for this capture so the capture point is set up um we need to associate the buffer to the capture so they're kind of tied together that'll make the capture point um send its traffic to that buffer so we're going to do monitor capture point associate um and then you do the points name first and then the buffers name it won't provide you any feedback but that's just how that command goes at this point we're ready to start but i'm going to show you the show command first to kind of make sure that uh you know what you're looking for to ensure that you're capturing so we're going to do show monitor capture uh show monitor capture buffer and then specify the name and then parameters so you can see let me extend that a little bit and run it again. You can see it shows you how many packets have been captured. Um, shows you various different uh, pieces of information about the capture as far as uh, the configuration. If it's currently active, you want to make sure once you start it that this goes to active. It, it obviously will, but just something to keep an eye on. If you, you don't see any packets coming in, I ensure that you've started it. So we're going to come back to that in a moment and look at what changed. Um, we're going to go ahead and start the capture at this point. So we're going to do monitor capture point start trace. Trace being the name of the capture point. And obviously to stop it, we just come back and, and put stop instead of start there. We're going to run the same command we did a minute ago to show. You can see there's no packets still, but we are now in an active state. We're going to go ahead and uh, simulate some traffic. So let's go to, let's go to router 3 for it. I suppose I could just repeat, uh, we'll just do 50. Alright, simulated some traffic, um, and actually earlier, uh, it didn't work, oh I reloaded this, okay. Uh, okay, so I wanted to set up TFTP transfer so that we could check that traffic later too. So I am going to copy TFTP flash. Drum 192.168.0.0. I don't remember. Oh man, come on. 0 0.2. I think I'm done with this window too, by the way. Alright, 0 0.2. Source file name tech.txt. Destination file name the same. Accessing. And we are copying. slowly nope okay that gotta be failed but that's fine that'll uh that'll actually be worth checking into on the uh wire shark real, really briefly so all right let's leave that how it is um let's do a show monitor let me help arrow a couple times you can see we've captured 462 packets now on that active uh buffer so we're gonna go ahead and stop that we're going to go back to where we started it, and we're going to stop. All right, that's it. Done. We now have a packet capture. We need to export it so we can import it into Wireshark, and uh, and that will basically be it. So you saw saw how to set it up with the access list, uh, creating the buffer, filtering the buffer based off the access list, creating the uh, capture point, and specifying which interface you're capturing on. And, uh, and that, you know, if you want in, out, or both. And um, associate the buffer to the capture point. And that's pretty much it. Start it and stop it, and you can check metrics on it. Now we're going to export it. That's the last thing you need to really be able to do. There are a few other show commands you can look up online as far as how to dump some of the information um, a little more verbosely. So you have that at your disposal if you need it to. But I like to just get it into Wireshark. So let's go ahead and um, monitor, capture, buffer buff export to tftp 
10.0.0.4 slash new pcap and that's gonna as i said earlier we've got that cloud set up that's gonna move uh move that over to my lab workstation if it works right and i've got tftpd 32 daemon running and we are transferring all right so let's go ahead and wire shark there's our file open that up all right you can see the initial pings we were doing between uh between the uh router three and router four there um and i don't really have enough room here to let me try and nope okay so again i'm gonna put a, a better resource for some wireshark um knowledge in the description here make sure you check out packetbomb.com for information on wireshark so this is, obviously would be a lot more uh intriguing on you know on a live network with a lot more data because you can do things like use the the expert info uh tabs in wireshark it'll, it'll tell you you know if there's any major warnings or issues that it's seeing in the in the packets that you have um, and this was a, a very small capture there wasn't much going on so um again check out packet bomb for some good in-depth uh, wireshark analysis and um this has been your guide on uh, on using the ios embedded packet capture so thank you for watching